it almost seems to be a rite of passage for 16 to 21 year olds. We are talking about wisdom teeth and millions of Americans have theirs removed every year. But what is the wisdom behind wisdom teeth removal? I am Dr. H. Ryan Kazemi and this is Oral Surgery Current. Wisdom teeth are the third molars and the last of the teeth to develop. Due to inadequate room for eruption and poor access for hygiene, wisdom teeth commonly become a source of a number of pathological conditions. It's widely held that the earlier they are extracted, the easier the surgery and the fewer the complications. The indications to remove wisdom teeth has been supported in the literature and many dentists and oral surgeons agree. Troublesome wisdom teeth should go. They can cause trouble even before they have erupted, including crowding, infection, and pain. But the benefits of surgery have been less clear when it comes to removal of teeth that are not causing problems. Well, that is until now. A task force was convened by the American Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons in March of 2007 to review the current literature with regard to wisdom teeth removal. Here are some of the findings. Wisdom teeth that have not erupted into the mouth, also known as impacted, adversely affect the gum tissue health of the adjacent second molars, as demonstrated by root damage and development of periodontal or gum disease. An impacted wisdom tooth after age of 23 may still change its position and adversely affect the surrounding teeth and bone. Wisdom teeth that have erupted into the mouth and are visible and leveled with the other teeth do not necessarily imply a good state of health. They are associated with increased gum disease and loss of bone and gum tissue involving the adjacent teeth. Periodontal disease induced by wisdom teeth is progressive and does not respond well to treatment. The data on bacteria makeup and asymptomatic periodontal disease, meaning that there is no pain or swelling in the third molar region, show the following. First, absence of symptoms such as pain and swelling does not indicate absence of disease or pathology. Second, disease-causing bacteria exist in clinically significant numbers in and around asymptomatic third molars. Third, periodontal disease indicated by pocket depths 4 millimeters or more and chronic inflammation exist in and around asymptomatic third molars. And finally, periodontal disease progresses in the absence of symptoms. Periodontal defects and tooth decay increase significantly as one ages in the presence of retained third molars. Also, the incidence of post-operative complications following third molar surgery is higher in patients greater than 25 years of age, therefore supporting the recommendations for earlier removal. Despite good intentions, it has not been possible to explain, predict, or prevent dental crowding, no matter what the cause. While it is likely that third molars play a role in the etiology of crowding, they are only one factor to consider in making a clinical decision about third molar management. Therefore, it is prudent for clinicians to educate patients that the cause of dental crowding is multifactorial, and while third molars may, may play a role in some patients, the current state of knowledge does not allow us to identify with accuracy who is at risk. The ultimate decision regarding the management of unerupted or impacted third molars is best made by an expert clinician after examination and review of factors such as age, position of the tooth, anticipated difficulty of removal, and risks associated with the surgery. The overall findings of this research task force support earlier publications and experiences of many surgeons for early removal of third molars, 
whether it's impacted or not, and in both symptomatic and asymptomatic patients. Some still adhere to the approach, if it does not bother you, leave it. But this is not supported and should be questioned. Extractions are most appropriately performed by oral surgeons who are trained and skilled for such procedures. It is commonly performed in the office under IV sedation, but can also be done with local anesthesia with or without nitrous oxide gas. Extractions of all four third molars can be done in as little as 20 minutes with rare complications when performed by an experienced oral surgeon. Following extractions, most people experience four to five days of a gradually tapering discomfort and some swelling. Most, however, return to work or school in a day or two. Wisdom teeth, whether impacted or not, are highly associated with local disease process and lack of symptoms does not necessarily mean presence of health. While removal of third molars contributes greatly to long-term health of the jaws and the adjacent teeth, it is best to consult with your oral surgeon to discuss its risks and benefits. Oral Surgery Current is recorded and produced by Dr. H. Ryan Kazemi at the Center for Oral and Facial Enhancement in Bethesda, Maryland. For more information, please check our website at www.facialart.com.